When we think about animals evolving, we draw back, of course, to Charles Darwin and his finches on the Galapagos, that he'd observed uh, different polymorphism, evolution by natural selection, in terms of their, their beaks changing to adapt to their environment. And that was really cool. It happened really quickly. And guess what? It's happening across many species across the world still to this day. Of course, still to this day. Uh, so let's look at a few animals that are rapidly evolving. The first is a green lizard from Florida. Look how cute he is. He's got a goiter. Right? <laughs> well, look, he's doing the best he can. <laughs> he, is, he is. Don't say it. He's very, he's very sensitive about his um, Some invasive brown lizards started uh, moving into this lizard's territory. There were limited resources, limited food for this lizard to eat. So this uh, species of lizard rapidly evolved to have uh, bigger, um, I, is the correct term feet for lizards? Mm -hmm. And then sticky, sticky, mm -hmm. sticky uh, phalanges. Uh, so that would be able to climb up trees and get to that level of uh, food and, and resources for it to live. Um, and this has happened in just 15 years, about 20 generations of lizards. There's also a shrimp uh, that lives deep in the ocean that has lost its eyes. So shrimp on the surface need their eyes to help them find food, help them survive uh, predators possibly. Um, but these ones, they don't really need their sense of sight too much because they're living in dark caves. So as a result, they've gone blind, relying on smell and touch. And as a result, their uh, senses of smell and touch have heightened to the point where they are now daredevil shrimp. <laughs> also, it's an official term. <laughs> it's a, a relatively uh, quick time for this evolution to happen, roughly mm -hmm. 200 million years. So. There's another animal, an owl, that has been changing color. So this refers to the tawny owl in Finland. There are basically uh, two different varieties of this kind of owl, a gray owl and a brown owl. Um, the gray one had previously done very well in winters, uh, but with climate change, brown owls are doing better now that they're, they're, they're blending into the trees as that owl we just saw was doing. And there has been a predominance of brown owls now uh, outweighing the, the number of gray. Yeah, this is kind of a, a little bit of a silver lining to climate change, right? It reminds in, me in of that, the moths that happened because of the right. Industrial Revolution. Right. Well, no, I mean, it's the same idea, which is that, you know, we, we are very worried about certain things happening because we're predicting uh, what the change of the world will be like 200 years from now using today's uh, data as far as what animals will survive and won't survive, but as we see here with, um, you know, a couple of the animals on this list, actually, uh, they, they, they figure it out. They change. You know, they also like go along. They're with also it. evolving to match things that we've done to their environment. As not humans. To, I'm not saying that it's all, you know, happy. In terms right? of climate change, this is also uh, salmon right. are adapting to this. Salmon are now spawning about two weeks Look earlier than they did. Yeah, that salmon There's looks a scary. Slippery salmon. <laughs> they did 40 years ago. So, and it's actually happening at the genetic level. Between the 1980s and 2011, the number of late migrating salmon declined by 20%, according to Ryan Kovac, a uh, population ecologist at the University of Las Alaska in Fairbanks. So, this is another animal that's adapting. Uh, do well, I wouldn't. Well, you could. It's, it's adapting due to the due changing to the environment, change. for sure. And I think that certainly. As as you know, the climate has changed over the course of the entire world, not just specifically you know the climate event that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, animals have had to adapt as well through those through those phases, and, they and have it to does, adapt if you're going to survive. Well, that's true. Otherwise, you die. And and like at least things, at least so far, has have have changed and have still survived throughout mm -hmm. you know hundreds of millions of years of fluctuations in, in Earth uh, conditions. Our next animal is one that has changed uh, that we might not be so happy about, the bed bug. So we know that bed oh, bugs no. have an influx in New York City, and bed bugs that are in New York City are now 250 times more resistant to pesticides than the bed bugs in Florida. They are also uh, becoming... The ones in Florida are just the retired bed bugs. They're just like, fuck it, I'm done. <laughs> they're, they have thicker shells and nerve and nerve cells, uh, more resistant nerve cells. Gross. So that they're, they're harder to be affected with chemicals and I guess harder to smash. Yeah. Our next uh, animal is a mouse that's immune to the poisons that we put out into its environment. So um, this was discovered in Germany, where the lowly house mouse bred with its poison-resistant cousin, the Algerian mouse. The result was a hybrid mouse with a very useful genetic mutation 
that uh, lets it survive over its other rodent relatives. Look, it's kind of, it sort of was a little bit adorable too. I mean, it wasn't I mean, like it was a pretty hugely cute mouse. ugly mouse or anything. It was brindle colored. I mean, all the poison poop in your house might be worth it for how cute this mouse <laughs> is, guys. Oh, God. Uh, life always finds a way. Those are some animals that have been adapting to uh, meet certain conditions, whether humans have caused them in a few cases or whether other animals have moved in their territory. Adaptability is the means to survival. Uh, in terms of your genetic uh, line. Uh, what do you think of these animals? Let us know below in the comments and please be sure to subscribe for more.